Got a 2008 Honda Accord. Let me do some rear brakes and rotors for you guys. We have these screws in the front. Yours may have them, they may be gone. To get that off, I used a torch to heat up the screws and an impact screwdriver. You put it in there and you hit the back of the screwdriver and it turns it out. Uh, hopefully yours aren't as corroded as these ones and they're no problem. You can use a regular screwdriver most of the time, but not all the time. And uh, you're gonna want somebody to hold the brake, the rotor from spinning if you use a regular screwdriver with a bar or somebody to put their foot on the brake. 19 millimeter on the lug nuts, got those off. We've got a 14 millimeter on the ratchet. We're gonna take the two caliper bolts out here. And this one's probably gonna be jammed on there pretty good. Brake's been grinding. The other side still had life, so hopefully we don't have a restricted hose a bad caliper on this side. We're about to find out. Let's get our brakes disassembled. We got a 17 millimeter on the back. We use a half inch ratchet. Brand new boy. You're welcome, Carl. Oh, I do like this one better than the other one. Hey, anytime you want me to break some craftsman tools so you get some new ones, let me know. <laughs> you got a really old one, they have to upgrade it to the cheapest, newer version model. <clears throat> really? I got me an old, 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 old one. They're pretty cool, man. It still works. The cotter key for this upper bowl joint is in the way of the ratchet on this side, so I can't really get the 17 mil in there. Do you want the uh, open face to crack it loose? There's an open face to your left. I could use a 17 millimeter 3 8 drive ratchet because it'll be skinnier than this half inch socket. The other side, this wasn't a problem, but that ball joint nut is real close to this bolt. You can get in your way. So we'll try a little skinnier socket and see if that'll get in there. The end of this bolt is kind of corroded. Uh, there we go. I was able to get it off with this ratchet. screw all the way out of here. Yeah. That's a good idea, Lemmer. We have all the tools to make this job just a little bit more easy, but we figure we'll, we'll use our fingers today. This bracket Whew. is rusty and nasty. That's crusty. Pads are gone. That's locked right in there. That could be a reason why they wore out faster than the other side. Other side still had some life. Make sure your sliders are loose. We're gonna pull these out, clean and grease them. 
We're gonna take this hardware off and clean in between the ear with our little Dremel tool, use a wire brush, whatever, a file, clean out underneath of this hardware. But why, Carl? Because the rust builds up and it makes the pads tight like this. Oh yeah. Especially if you're in the rust belt like us. So then it'll make it grind on your... If you bought cheap pads and yeah. it doesn't have replacement hardware, make sure you clean up your hardware. And we're gonna grease to prevent rust in the future in between the hardware and the bracket. And we're also gonna put a little grease on the hardware so the pads can slide easily. And Jamie will clean that up while I get the rest of this apart. Yes, sir. Just make sure everything's clean, people. Now I'm gonna show you how to compress this caliper. Just give it a smack with the camera on the rotor. Got our rotor off. We got our new rotor right behind me. Make sure you spray that off with some brake cleaner. Clean up your hub surface if it's rusty. This one's actually really clean. There's no pitting or rust bubbles or anything. Now you can get a caliper compression <laughs> turn back kit, rewind caliper, whatever you want to call it. You can get one of these kits for like 50 bucks online. Maybe even cheaper, Harbor Freight, whatever. Comes with all kinds of adapters. Or you can rent it from your local auto parts store for free. If you don't think you're ever gonna use it again and you don't want one. So I've already got my adapter that I need. Right here. The two little pegs will line up in the hole of the caliper. Oh, I didn't put it on right. Like that today. All right, we're gonna have to turn this one all the way in to fit it in because the caliper is so far out. A little bit more. Tighten it down, usually by hand is good. And that's what it looks like. You got the pegs inside of the holes of the caliper, the grooves. But as I turn this, the caliper is going to turn inward and it's not turning. This caliper is stiff, super stiff. Should not be that stiff. Seven eighths ratchet on the end of there. That's a no go. These calipers jump, so we'll be changing out a caliper too. All right, I'm back at it, guys. It was not a bad caliper. The caliper turned back fine. It was the e-brake cable was partially engaged, like halfway's engaged. And uh, I just took my hammer and hammered it back. What we have going on is a stiff e-brake cable. So once you engage your e-brake, it pulls it back and doesn't return.
So that was the problem. After I brought the cable out, this turned back in real easily. And so uh -oh. it just, what? I just spun it right in. Which? And the caliper spins in. Now we take our seven eighths ratchet. Spin that. Take our tool off. So that's what it was. If your e-brake is partially engaged, your caliper will not retract. And that was the problem. Make sure your ears are nice and clean and we'll get some grease. I use Silglide brake grease, high temp silicone based brake grease, not regular grease guys. We're just going to put a little film here on the piston of the caliper and the ears where they contact the pads. There we go. Now we'll slap our rotor on there. And it goes on one way so that the holes for the retaining screws line up. <coughs> we'll pop those suckers back in there. Make sure they're tight. You want to make sure they're all the way sunk in there so they don't contact your rim. I've seen that mistake before. And we've got our bracket all cleaned up and greased up. Everywhere. Everywhere we said we were going to. With that high temp brake grease. We have an inner and an outer pad here. <coughs> Here's our outer pad. It's gonna have no squealer tab on it or anything. It'll look a little different. The inner pad has a, uh, like a little dowel on it. I'll show you that in a minute. We'll set the outside pad in. Line up our bracket. Get these nice and tight. Tighter the better. Snug up the top one. Come down to the bottom one. And give it a full torquing. Full, full, full torquing. Can't really get a good grip on this top one on this side. That's why we got the wrench. What do you got? There we go, nice and tight there. Yeah, it's been like that for a minute. That is your sink. Mm -hmm. Sure is. Inside pad, squealer tab, lets you know when your brakes are low. Pop that guy in there. Well, there's two different options on these. Where's the little spring clips for this side, Jamie? Oh, it should be still in the back. Where'd that bag go? 
Spring clips. All right. There's that little notch in this inboard pad, which fits into the groove in the caliper. Little spring clips. They fit into the pads. And they're gonna make the pads come off the rotor better for better wear in the future. See? So you get once you put your spring clips in, you kinda gotta hold it together. It might come out at you. This caliper is not lining up with the dowel. So we've got to turn this caliper in just a little bit more. I don't think it'll turn in anymore. It should bottom out so that it lines up, but not always. Let's see what we got going on here. See what we can do. This caliper needs to turn a little bit more. Where'd that pipe go? I don't know where that pipe went. There we go. So I didn't have it all the way bottomed out. They needed just that little bit more. Now, hopefully it lines up. Find a nail or something in that tire? That was a screw. You got her plugged up. Yeah. It stuck out like a sort of thumb. It was the easiest patch I've ever done. You're exactly where the which direction it came out of there. Here we go. Now our caliper fits on. Sick. Sometimes this is all it takes. A little screw in the tire? A little screw in the tire. Just a little bit. screws to line up. There we go. Tighten these up. So we are going to tighten these two up and then put your wheel back on, torque your lug nuts. And before you take off, make sure you pump that brake pedal till your, uh, till your brake pedal gets stiff again because these pistons need to come out or come get squeezed in and seat on that rotor. If you try taking off without pumping your brake pedal first, you're not gonna have brakes. So make sure you do that. And uh, I think that covers the basics, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.